it's very simple to see an easy $400,000 target for Bitcoin, in my wow. opinion. And I think we could even hit that possibly by late August, early October with my track record. Maybe I'll be off by two months. Maybe it'll be a Christmas present. BitSwap is the hottest new way to trade tokens. Crawling all the top decentralized exchanges, BitSwap gets you the very best price and value for your trades. BitSwap is changing the game. Try it now at BitSwapDex.io. Welcome to BitBoy Crypto, the largest crypto channel in all the interwebs. My name is Ben. Every day on this channel, I show you how to make money in cryptocurrency. If you like money in crypto, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Also, guys, if you like these interviews and collaborations, make sure to smash the likes. Today, I'm going to be talking with K-Dub, a.k.a. Crypto Zombie, a very longtime friend of the channel. But we're going to be discussing some of the changes in Bitcoin over the years and whether or not we are looking at a Bitcoin super cycle with no end to the bull market in sight or if we're doomed to repeat the bear market tragedy of 2018. Now, if at any point in this video you feel like this is something that you'd like to trade, you can trade Bitcoin and Ethereum along with other assets on Bybit, my trading side of choice, on leverage. You guys can visit bitboycrypto.com slash deals in order to get access to Bybit. We've got some special promos coming up soon. All right, guys, let's go ahead and jump into this video. Hey, guys, I'm pleased today to be joined with one of my favorite people in all of crypto, K-Dub from Crypto Zombie. How's it going? BitBoy, thank you so much for having me on the channel, man. It has been far too long. Mm -hmm. I, we, we've actually gone back so, so far. We, we both had these channels in the bear market. Um, I was on your channel before you even broke 100K subs. We have probably seen every type of exit scam, rug pull, yeah. pump, dump. I mean, literally, you name it, and and it's it's just an honor and a pleasure to be back on your channel, and and I, and I just want to congratulate you on your amazing growth. It's been incredible. So you know, once again, to you and all of your yeah. subscribers, thank you so much for having me on. Well, thank you, and guys, if you want to go subscribe to uh, Crypto Zombies YouTube channel, you guys can do that down below in the video description. Uh, I'll say there's a lot of people that helped me along in this journey to getting kind of the top spot in crypto, and uh, you're definitely one of those people, and and so you know, appreciate the congratulations, but definitely thank you to you as well. So. Um, but let's let's get into Bitcoin, right? You've been like me. You've been an expert in fundamentals. You've gotten a little more into the technicals as of lately when it comes to Bitcoin. And the question a lot of people have is, are we going to see something similar to what we've seen always in history, which is a bear market? Or is there an argument that we're going to see a Bitcoin super cycle where the price doesn't drop nearly as dramatically, the 85% that we normally see. You know, of course, this would be led by the corporations and the big investment funds that won't sell. What is the argument for a Bitcoin super cycle in your opinion? And do you see that as, a, you know, what percentage of a chance do you think that is? Uh, well, you know, if you had asked me maybe last year, I would have said almost 100% chance that we're just doing the standard four-year cycle, yes. having cycle every 210,000 blo know, blocks. Here we go. We know how that works. Satoshi built that mechanism into it. This time around, I have to honestly say it really is different. Not the clickbait different, like really different. Like we are just seeing, you know, this, this institutional interest, you know, the Michael Saylors, the Teslas. I don't have to tell you what's going on right now. But you've even seen Kathy Wood from ARC come out saying, you know, it's going to be irresponsible for people not to own Bitcoin on their balance sheets moving forward, where you're seeing, you know, the allocation between bonds and, um, you know, traditional income, whatever. You're going to see Bitcoin as a recommended um, portion of everyday portfolio, number one, you know, and I just think that we are just seeing so much interest in Bitcoin that it's hard for me to think that we're going to have that four-year cycle. Now, I, I still do believe in the technicals, right? There's an old saying, show me the chart, I'll tell you the news, right? I still believe that the smart money, you know, the, the big whales, the high net worth individuals, there are cycles to these, and they're going to play it to their maximum advantage the same way that they play stocks and everything else. Crypto's just, you know, might be the new guy on the block for them. But I still think we may have a similar four-year cycle. But what I'm seeing is something more similar to what we saw um, where you kind of have these these smaller local tops rather than these macro local tops. For example, you know, a thousand dollars was was the big one previously. Then we twenty we did a twenty x to twenty k, right? We had that crazy pullback, but then you know how we went up to to that fourteen thousand dollar level in twenty nineteen, and it wasn't really Absolutely. a full bull; it was like a right. half bull. I could see the market emulating mm. more of those 
kind of half pumps where we're not going to get the 84%, 90% corrections. We may only get a 60% correction this time, right? So you might see Bitcoin, you know, go up to some crazy uh, valuation, but then come down where we're actually maybe even sitting higher than we are today. You know, I've seen some people say we have to go down and retest 20K. It has to happen or else it's not full confirmation. I'm not convinced that these high net worth individuals are going to actually let that happen. I mean, you're yeah. looking at Tesla buying at $33,000. A lot of these whales, the whale clusters, the map showing, uh, you know, huge interest between $45,000 and $46,000. Mm. And these aren't guys that are coming in, you know, like, you know, Joe Schmo, I'm just doing this for a 5% flip. I'm going to leverage trade on Bybit. No, <laughs> these are guys that like, I'm putting this on my, my balance sheet because I need something to hedge that's better than the dollar. Because with all of this printing and all of this helicopter inflation, I mean, there's just, you cannot keep your reserves in dollars. It's, it's, it's just the irresponsible mm -hmm. thing to do at this point. So I really think that because of this fundamental difference, we may not see the traditional four-year cycles that we're used to, but I still do think we are going to see the halving cycles. If yeah. that Does that kind of clarify? It does. So, it, it, it does. And we'll move on to that. I do want to say that, you know, what I find to be interesting is that a lot of us that have been in this every single day, I mean, we've been in this for years, you know, like every single, think of the bear market when nobody was watching channels, it was daunting. We were still in the news every single day and we were looking at the numbers and look at the percentages and looking at the cycles. And what's interesting to me is a lot of us who've been doing that, we've all came up with kind of the same number, which is instead of an 85% price drop, we could see like a 60 to 65% price drop. And I think that's very interesting. I think that's, you know, there's definitely something to note there. Um, but in terms of the cycles, the four-year cycles, if there's not a Bitcoin super cycle, and I'm like you, I'm, I always say, I'll believe it when I see it. When I see the cycle is broken, I can get in on that narrative. Until then, it's just the same thing I've heard for years and years and years that hasn't changed. If we go to the traditional cycle way, and we have a, a, a top of the bull market this year in 2021. When do you think that's going to be? And also, what are your price targets? What do you think is the maximum number for Bitcoin? And what is kind of your most realistic number for Bitcoin that you're looking at? Okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, nobody knows. I mean, I could throw, I could say a million dollars. You know, I could. Oh, say you heard that, it right? here first, guys. But One million dollar <laughs> Bitcoin cryptos. No, 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 no. Print it in an article. Hey. <laughs> hey, actually, before we get into this, I, I had actually gone on Crypto Potato uh, on their website in, yeah. in uh, November of 2019. And I said Bitcoin was going to hit $55,000 by the end of 2020. And people thought I was crazy. Well, I was two months off. Yeah. We hit it in February. So, Good job. Okay. I, I'm not, you know, I'm just, just, just trying to. Okay, I would but, pat your also, back, but, but, but only digitally. There you go. Yeah. I hope you felt. There that. we go. We, we, we got to be safe. We got to be safe. So, okay. Looking at the realistic versus the crazy prediction. Well, the way that I've seen it, just go back. The previous high was a thousand. We hit 20 K. So let's just assume that that's a 20 X. Okay. Let's assume that that's the max, which I do believe in kind of diminishing returns. It gets harder and harder to push, you know, an asset up higher and higher with this higher valuation. I mean, we're, we're into right. the trillions now, right? So with that simple logic, it's very simple to see a, a easy $400,000 target for Bitcoin, in my wow. opinion. And I think we could even hit that possibly by late August, early October, with my track record, maybe I'll be off by two months. Maybe it'll be a Christmas present, right? So yeah. I'm, I'm looking at about a 400, but I'm looking at a blow off top, right? Where you just, you see this wick. It's a point that we can reference, but we're not going to stay there. Right. More realistic, I would have to go more around the stock to flow. $288,000 Bitcoin, right? Two hundred and fifty. Um, lots of people ask me like, what's the cash out plan? When should I start getting a little bit, you know, concerned? You know, once we hit 100,000, if you've been in and you know you you, you want to take a little bit off the table, that's fine. Um, two hundred and fifty that that is like my I need to actually yeah. move some off the uh -huh. table level. But and, and I, I want to clarify something though. It it for me it's not like oh I'm just in this to, to get out of it. No 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 no. I I hate I hate fiat. I'm I'm mm -hmm. Bitcoin for life. But the reality is is we sat there. Yep. We watched our portfolios go from you know nothing to hundred x to break even in some even cases we lost money. And I'm, and, and you know, the biggest problem with some of the, uh, not, I don't want to name names, but 
there were a lot of people just telling you hodl for life. Mm-hmm. You know, you get married to this coin. And, and I think that it's, it's, it's not responsible. And that's why I like what you do on your channel, Ben. And I try to tell people like, let's be realistic about profit taking this time. There are going to be cycles. There are going to be bottoms and tops. We want to maximize our gains. And we're yeah. going to be playing this in the bear market as well. You know, and, and, and the end goal is cash out use that maybe even short bitcoin i know that's that's like not I'm even allowed to in say a bear short market bitcoin. that's that's going to be a strategy but, um, we use in the bear market for sure but the ultimate goal is to just get more bitcoin yeah. because i want as much bitcoin as i could possibly get and you know i'm very transparent about that so um yeah but i mean of course you know i do own all coins as well i know you're big into cardano i saw you just yeah. purchased a quite a hefty amount of cardano yeah. um for for anyone watching i'm actually very big into polka dot so i feel like you and me we have a little bit of opposing yeah. maybe views. You, you, you're more of our Cardano. You guys guy, heard it, heard, heard it here far, uh, first. Crypto Zombie versus BitBoy Crypto boxing match. Oh, no, I don't know do. about that one. I got a box, that Manny, one, Manny Pacquiao boxing glove right here. Okay. Don't you, don't you have like U, UFC experience or something? I mean, like, I, I might know. have done a little bit, a little something in the past. Yeah. But here, here's what I will say. I think you made a really good point. I actually just earlier today on the channel, uh, my viewers got to watch my 2021 cash out strategy where I talk about a lot of the same stuff that you're talking about. The generationally changing money is when you sell at the top and then get back in at the bottom in the bear market. And that should be a big focus for people. But I do think you really touch on something that's very important, which is, and I'll name names here. Uh, Ian Bellina, I love Ian. I love token metrics, but Ian, Subo Man, um, not data dash as much, but some of the YouTube box mining, a lot of these guys that were bigger in 2018, 2017, 2018, they made a very bad mistake. And the mistake was they kept pushing the bear or the bullish narrative when things had gone bearish. Now, I like a lot of those guys. Like I said, Ian, I'm very close with. I really like him. He's a really legitimately good dude. But a lot of these guys, they lost all their influence because they didn't realize when it was over. And I think we all learn that lesson. And so those of us that are on crypto YouTube now that are really having big audience audiences that we actually care about, it's not about us making money. It's about us all doing well together. We are so, it's so pivotal to us to make sure that we don't repeat the same mistakes because that leads to our audience getting hurt down the road. And we would rather call the bull market too early than to call it too late. Right. Well, yeah, I mean, that was the biggest problem was not taking profits. You know what I'm saying? And you could argue, okay, maybe you could take profits too soon, but at least you have profits, right? You know what I'm trying to say? Like, it's one thing to kick yourself because you didn't hold on too long. It's another thing to hold on for just way too long. Not only have you wasted your time, but what do you even have to show for it? You know, so I 100% agree with you, man. And we are going to be, like I said, we're going to be taking this to the top. We're going to be taking it back down to the bottom. And the end goal is to get Bitcoin. And like you said, you know, you, you have gains on paper, but they're only on paper until they're, those are actualized gains. So that's kind of the issue, you know, um, Unreal. Yeah, I mean, exactly. And, and, and for me, you know, the, the cycles are very, they're very obvious, like how it's mm-hmm. gone, you know, with the Bitcoin into the altcoin. So, you know, during the bear market, uh, you know, I was heavily Bitcoin, Bitcoin focused, Bitcoin trading, because that was really where the liquidity was. That yeah. was where the interest was. And then now that these altcoin cycles are back, I'm in altcoins again. And people are like, oh, you hopped into altcoins? Yeah, I hopped into altcoins. I'm not going to sit here and be a Bitcoin maxi when you got these things going 10, 20, 100x. I mean, I'm going to utilize that, but I'm also going to take profits and put that into Bitcoin because we already know that Bitcoin is tried and true. It's proven. And um, I think Ethereum as well. You know, sometimes I hate the fact that Ethereum is an altcoin. I think it's it's more than that. It's definitely proven. It's I mean, it's it's here to stay. It's not going anywhere. Um, you know, EIP 1559 coming out, all these different layer two solutions. I, I'm a huge fan of Polkadot. You like Cardano. There's plenty out there. But I mean, if Ethereum does pull its weight, it's got that network effect. It's already got some of the greatest dApps. Once we get those fees down, scalability, I mean, it's it's done. You know, it's it's got the network. So I, I would I would not bet against Ethereum. So, yeah, yeah. absolutely. I, I think that's definitely something um, to, to take into consideration here. But what I would say, uh, one, I just want to leave you one final point. Uh, which is, I agree with you, everything about Bitcoin, everything about Ethereum. As far as bull market, bear market for Bitcoin, I was actually on the stream this morning looking at some numbers. If Bitcoin were to go to $400,000 in 85%, which is the average drop in the history of Bitcoin over bear markets, if it did go down 85%, it would put it in between $47,000 and $50,000. And $47,000, they say, is now the strongest support 
since we were at 11,000. So I, 47,000 is a number I'm looking at for a bear market. And so, you know, for investors that get in right now where we're above $47,000, you know, it is important to understand that like, if you don't sell at the top, you could end up at a loss, you know? So timing the market is everything. I know that's something that, uh, that, that you agree with. So um, thanks for coming right. on the channel today. We're going to have you on again, definitely. Uh, this will not be the only time uh, that we do this. Uh, you got any final thoughts for the people, Kyle? Uh, no, just, uh, just like I said, I, I think we have a lot more to go out of this. You know, I, I've seen people calling a bearish narrative since like 9,000 is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. We're in the bull market guys. And if you're thinking about, if you're thinking about selling right now, right now at the moment where we're having this institutional frenzy and you're having all of these like high net worth individuals pour in, you know, companies putting it on the balance sheet. I think you're absolutely insane. I think we have a, a, at least another strong six to eight months ahead of ourselves. But I do want to also say that during that journey, remember it is important to take profits and never to over leverage yourself or risk more than you can afford to lose. I'm sure everybody says that, but sometimes we need to be reminded because, you know, you can get emotional. And, and I have found that trading with emotion is probably one of the biggest mistakes you can make. You know, you have to go in, have a strategy, you know, uh, you know, have a, have a plan and, and know when to exit. So definitely, you know, um, yeah, just ma make sure to take profits and uh, that's it, man. Just thanks for having, uh, uh, we could have done more price predictions today, but we'll save them for later. Cause I got some good ones. I got some good things. Yeah, I want to have, we'll 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 have you come back on for sure. Uh, maybe next week or maybe the week after we'll have you back on. Cause I, I know you wanted to, you want to talk about some, some trading stuff. I know you want to talk about some technicals some trading. We oh, we've, we've been, today, so. we've, we've been killing it on the channel lately, man. I mean, it. granted, you know, it, it's a bull market, so it's not really complicated. You long the dips, but you'd be surprised. Some people still, that's, that's a confusing concept. So, well, but we'll we get there, man. We'll get there. Like we've got secret information that everybody doesn't have because we've got the experience to have been through these cycles. We haven't only read about them, we've lived through them. So uh, Kyle, thank you so much for coming on the show. Everybody, don't forget, head on over to Crypto Zombies channel and make sure to sub. Let's see if we can get them like an extra five or 10,000 subscribers from this video. One of the best fundamental experts out there, uh, you know, in cryptocurrency. So once again, thanks for coming on. Everybody, drop your comments down below. Let me know who you want me to collaborate with next. That's all I got. Be blessed. Good boy out.